un clic. En la Universidad Autónoma de Occidente somos wow. Somos calidad. Y tú eres la razón de este proceso de excelencia. Somos tecnología que garantiza la proyección de tus ideas. Somos innovación y emprendimiento. Y estamos felices de acompañarte en la creación de tu proyecto de vida. Somos inclusión. Sabemos que la educación es para todos. Una mezcla de ideas, cultura y sentimientos que nos dan una mirada, como la tuya. Somos responsables con el medio ambiente y así puedas impactar a tu entorno. Somos personas enamoradas de lo que hacemos. Somos como tú. Somos wow. Welcome to Wow Speaks English. A radio program made by students for the world. Welcome to Wow Speaks English. A radio program made by students for the world. Hello, hello. Welcome to Why Speaks English. My name, as your hostess, is Diana Toro. And with me today, I have the honor of having the beautiful Jennifer Hurtado. Hello, Jen. Hi, teacher Janita. How are you today? I'm great. I'm Welcome good. back. Thank you. It feels so good to be here. Very good. Why don't you introduce your partner? Of course, yes. So I'm about to introduce my partner. His name is Juan. So, Juan, how are you? How are you feeling today? Hi, Jennifer. Thank you very much. I'm really good. What about you? I'm good. I'm perfectly. Awesome. So, Juan is one of our new members. Why don't you tell us a little bit about you, your full name? What do you study? What semester are you in? What are, are you into? So, my name is Juan David Puentes. I am studying mechanical engineering. I am third semester. And I really love politics. I love everything that has to do with UN. I love languages. I love sports, especially tennis and helping people. And that's pretty much it. 
Cool. So that was Juan David for you guys. And our third and also newest member is Juan Fernando. Hello, Juan. For welcome. Hi, teacher, I'm great. And you? I'm good. I tried it, to be honest. So tell us a little bit about you. Uh, well, uh, my name is Juan Fernando Lozano. I study marketing and international business. I ran right out in the fifth semester. Uh, I, lo I love uh, football. Uh, I love gaming. Um, of course, uh, I would like to prove my English through this radio team, this great, great member. So let's improve together. Welcome, Juan Fernando. And last but not least, we have special guest us today. His name is Leonardo Segura. Welcome, Leonardo. Thank you, Diana. And it's a pleasure for me to be here. We are going to be talking about some interesting topics today. So let's get started. Of course, yes. Um, we want to say also hi to the, our audience that is watching us live. How this, how is this week going? What's your name? Where are you listening from? And and while uh, you're right in the comments, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram as Wow Speaks English. There you will see some um, weekly fun facts, videos, and info regarding also on our future program. Also, if you are a WAS student. Uh, I want to be part of a radio program. Please send us a message through Instagram and we will contact you soon. Also, if you'd like to be a guest in our program, you may contact us, explain the topic and ideas you would like to share in our program. So, guys, without further ado, let's start with a new section, which is What Do You Think About It? Let's go into our first section. So since your opinion is so important for us, we have created, newly created this section where we're gonna ask specific information about interesting topics. And this is your opportunity to write complete sentences, express your opinion and give reasons supporting that opinion. The first question that we have for our audience, Juan Fernando, that is... Can you explain what inflation is? While you give us the answers in the chat, we will move to our team member, Valentina Soto, who asked uh, this question about our campus. So let's connect with Valentina. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new section of the program. In this session, we will be able to interact face to face with you and know how much the world knows English. Join us. Can you explain what inflation is? Um, inflation is when the price of a currency is overvalued and in some countries when it's about the conversion of currencies to, a, to another country it's when the, the price of, I don't know, for example, the dollar is overvalued in pesos in this case? I don't have idea. I don't know about the inflation. I think that in, in that case, uh, things uh, start to cost more of that money uh, for the same thing. Uh, for example, uh, if 10 years ago, one apple cost $1, tomorrow will cost uh, $5 the same apple. Mm, I don't know some increase or, or rates, the variation of rates and increase in prices uh, because some phenomena in the economic field, I think. Inflation is the rise of um, prices over time? Sure, inflation is like the rate of increase of the cost of living and the prices of goods and services over a given period of time. It has to do with the increasing of the cost of living in a country. It has to do with uh, growing the, with the growth of prices in rent, in utilities, in fuel, and uh, in, in groceries, for instance, and that affects seriously the way of people live and the way of people they can manage their economies. In general, the inflation uh, takes uh, one year for the pay period of study. This determines the uh, price the uh, the Product that one year for another year. Inflation is a macroeconomic phenomenon that means the prices increase constantly among the time.
Okay, so let's read some of the uh, comments you left. Um, and let's ask Leonardo also. Leonardo, meanwhile, what do you think what inflation is? Well, um, one of the other things in the economy is that the price keeps rising and people don't know why. But <clears throat> the thing is that <clears throat> in an economy, prices are subject to change. Some of them will increase and some of them will decrease. The thing is that um, inflation is a um, rising in this price is sustained over normally over a year <clears throat> that decreased your purchasing power. Perfect. We have a an answer from Isabella Lopez, and she says, inflation is the increase of the money in a country. Thank you so much, Isabella, for your answer. So that was question number one. Valentina is right now going around campus, asking some people different questions. And we have a second question, right, Jennifer? Yeah. So we have the second question, and the question is, is it better to have a high or a low uh, dollar? So please write your answers in comment section and let's see um, what people around campus answer. It's better to have a high or low dollar. In our case, uh, the dollar should be much lower than it is right now. It was, it inflated so much. So I think if the dollar were a little bit undervalued, it would be much better. I think it's better low dollar. Why? Because it's more uh, low cost the, the life. I don't know. With a person without knowledge in this area, I think that is better a uh, low dollar. Well, it depends on where you are. If you are um, yeah. in the in the United States, it's good to have a high dollar. Um, if you are here and we depend a lot of, on import, importing goods, if the dollar is high, it means that we have to pay more pesos yeah. for the same goods. So you are here in Colombia, you have a family member in the U.S. and is sending you money every month. It's good for you to have higher dollar because you can buy more with that. On the contrary, if you have, for instance, a debt in dollars, for instance, that's bad for you because you have to pay more and interest grow and so on and so forth. It depends. If I export, I, I prefer that high dollar. If I import, it's a low dollar. <laughs> Yes, of course, it's, it's circumstantial, but what is your uh, your labor uh, in, into the market? In Colombia, the exchange rate, when the exchange rate is high, uh, the exporter is gonna get more income for their, for their um, sales abroad Colombia. But the companies who produce in Colombia and they need uh, raw materials and they buy the raw materials in, in the other countries like, uh, I don't know, Ecuador or Brazil or Ukraine, their, their cost is going <coughs> to increase. So they need to increase the prices to the uh, final customers. Okay, we have received some interesting answers, and now we're going to ask um, Leonardo, what do you think about this question? Is it better to have a high or a low dollar? Well, that's a curious question. It depends on you, on who you are. If you are an investor from outside the country, you will prefer a lower uh, dollar, but if we are, um, or for us being a Colombians, we are going to prefer for sure a um, a lower dollar in order to um, afford more goods or services. Very good. And we already have some of your answers in the chat for the first question that was, what do you think inflation is? And the second one that, what do you think is better to have a high dollar price or a low dollar price? Uh, there, Juan David, we have Hector Fabio's comment. Can you read it right there? Sure, it says, Due to different social, economical, governmental issues, the value of money lowers. Indeed, it's true. Okay, another, in, another comment made by Santiago Gonzalez. Thank you so much. Inflation occurs in the economy of a country in the disorderly increase in prices of most goods and services. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Santiago, for that answer. We also have an answer for Ana Milena. She says, for us, it's better to have a low dollar. Thank you, Ana Milena, for that answer. And Juan David, you have a third question, right? Yes. So the third and last question is, do you know what the dollar price is today? People at the campus give the following answers. Do you know what the price of the dollar is today? I don't remember that last Friday, that is the close of price of dollar is 4,336, 37, I don't know. I don't remember that it's the, the, at the detail, but it's okay. 4,300. It's about 4,150, about that. Thank you so much, Valentina, for this student survey. Now, it's time to begin with the next section, which is Tip Talk. Many things happen every day at the U. Let's discuss them at Tip Talk. Welcome to Tip Talk. Now, let's go with the host, Diana, which is going to talk about it. Okay, guys, so as you know, the Tip Talk is the section where we give you the facts, the information, the research that we have done to clear up any doubts and, of course, for you to learn not only English, but today we're learning about inflation and the dollar price. This is affecting not only Colombia, this is affecting everybody worldwide. worldwide. And that's why we have Leonardo Segura. Our guest today, he is 22 years old and he's currently studying multimedia engineering, right, Juan Fernando? Yeah, Leonardo here is passionate about the economics and the finances. And a year ago, he started investing in cryptocurrencies and forex, isn't it? Yeah, and that's right. Yeah, um, these skills have, have allowed him to understand a lot of the functioning of the economics and also to protect his capital from problems like the inflation. Yeah, that's right. That's the reason why I'm here and it's been cooler. Thank okay, you. so we want to ask you something. Uh, how do you think that inflation is affecting Colombia as of today? Um, Colombia is getting affected by inflation in order to, um, because it decreases the, the power of purchasing of the people, as, as I said before. And also, um, it can result in hyperinflation because you can see, maybe, or we can see that the um, supply chain can be like froze so we can face um an hyperinflation like venezuela faced it in 2018. that is something that scared us but we hope that the government and the central bank do their their thing in order to protect us for from that okay well that's those are scary words the one that you just mentioned right there let's hope that it definitely doesn't get to that since we're talking about economics, finance, there's some concepts and words that we would like you to get familiar with before we get deeper into the topic. That is why we invite you to play the following game where we're going to match the concept with the definitions. Let's give it a look. So there we have it. All of us are going to play, Leonardo, Juan Fernando, Juan David, Jennifer, and you in the audience. You are going to match the words with the definitions next to them. We're going to start one by one. So which of the words on the left define or is a synonym of the word resources? Let's just start first by reading all the options that we have. Uh, Jennifer, could you help us with that? Read course, all the yes. ones on the left. So we have uh, currency, fixed, demand, uh, recession, low supply, price, goods, assets, supply, and stocks. Very good. The second one is fixed. Fixed. Good. So which one out of this means resources? We want to hear from the people in the audience connected right now. But for now, we're going to take guest. Which one do you think it is? For me, it's goods. Goods? Yep. Goods are resources. Another option, Juanfred, or do you agree? Uh, I'll go with assets, to be honest. Assets? On the way, Jennifer? Assets, too. Stock or supply? 
stock or supply wow we have different options oh my god what are we gonna do let's see we have an answer here from isabella isabella why did you change your mind you sent your answer and you deleted it come on you can do it um let's see we have another answer isabella lopez says that rice means increase so let's just start with that one since she already gave us that answer so santi let's move the word rice into the box for increase do you guys agree with that answer yeah totally. cool okay so what about resources we agree on something is it assets is it goods or is it stocks <laughs> you guys are supposed to be the economics. I'm slipping <laughs> into goods. Goods. Okay, let's gonna leave, let's leave that one pending. Okay. The <laughs> next one is deficient or limited. Which one could go with that one? Recession, like a deficient or limited. Now I'm going to select low supply. Low supply, you guys? Low supply. low supply. Okay, majority say low supply. So, Santi, let's move that one. Low supply into... Thank you for your patience. Thank you for waiting. We just had a technical situation, but we're back. We're back and we're still playing the vocabulary game. Here, we already had some answers, so we're going to ask our master to show us again. Very good. So we have low supply. It is deficient or limited. Let's go into that one. Let's drag that purple word. There you go. We have another one that says, let's see, we have more answers. Okay, let's go into the next one. Request. Which one is a request from the options that we have, Leo? I'm going for demand. Demand, you guys? Yeah, me too. Demand. Okay, so something that you need that you request is that demand. Yes. Let's match that one the next one ownership certificates of any company that means you own part of that company what is that stocks stocks yes, stocks that's <laughs> it very good and definitely this game is for you guys in the audience we want to read your comments match the words on the left with the definitions on the right and write it in the comments the next one is stable so which one would that be? I'm going to go for fixed. Yeah, I do. Fixed. fixed. So it doesn't change. It's stable. It remains the same. It is fixed. The next one. Merchandise. Good. Good. Not like, mm -hmm. not like I'm good in you, but like... <laughs> I didn't see that before. I'm going to too. Good too. There yeah. you go. Goods, products, merchandise. Mm -hmm. And this vocabulary is so important for you to get familiar with to be able to understand everything that we're going to keep telling you about. Let's go with Juan Fernando. What about, okay, let's wait. Goods is merchandise. Yeah. So let's move that one, Sandy. Exactly. Uh, lower before. There you go. What about the amount of something available for use? Which one is that one? That's going to be supply. 
I'm going for supply too. That's the right answer, supply. Good. Okay, and then we have recession. Jocelyn Zoe Cuellar says that one is an economic decline. So let's match those two. Let me say that she's right. Or she's, at least for me. Yes, 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 definitely. And we have two left. We have assets and currency. So money system in a country. Tan, tan, tan. That is? Currency. Currency. Currency, currency. yes. And last but not least, resources mean assets. So all this finance vocabulary is going to be very useful for you when you read some finance news and with the following information that we're going to be sharing with you. So let's check those answers, Santi, and let's go into our next section. Good job, everybody. We got them right. So Juan David, what happens now? Right. Now that we are all familiar with the concepts, I would like to ask you guys and the audience, what do you think is the cause for the dollar rising and inflation? Write your answers in the chat. That's good, Juan. And we also have done some research and talk about uh, with some experts, and we're going to tell you some of the reasons why the dollar is rising. So the first reason is uh, the effective annual interest rate that the U.S. government pays as a debit obligation expressed on a percentage. It's only one of the biggest reasons behind uh, the U.S. dollar in the rise of the U.S. Um, in the U.S. capital. And also this favors um, in the increased demand of the U.S. goods and therefore the rise of the currency in other countries. What do you think, Juan? Indeed. That's the reason, and it's one of the most important ones, and the one that has the most negative repercussions. Another reason that connects with the, uh, this idea is due to the new monetary policy that the US Federal Reserve has made in order to deal with the high inflation in the US. The monetary policy is reducing the amount of currency circulated in the world. This measure is done by central banks, and then reducing wages and increasing duties for products entering the US. This has made worldwide currencies to devaluate, including ours. For example, on July 12, one dollar was equal to one euro, which is 4,600 Colombian pesos. Wow, that's a very high price, to be honest. Now, I want to ask our audience uh, a question. How has the dollar price affected us? Leonardo, how has the dollar price affected you? Um, for me, um, I don't think that it has affected me directly because um, I can keep up, like, as I said, my capital protected in order to uh, like keep investing in something that is going to be um, rising in years. So um, I protect my capital doing like those investments. And like, to be honest, I don't know how to answer that question because um, I, I don't know how it has affected me like right now. Oh, okay, okay. Um, well, I can definitely say that the way that I have been affected with the inflation in dollar price is number one, what I used to buy in the supermarket with a certain amount of money, now I need to pay double or a little bit more than I used to. So example, before I used to pay 100,000 every time I went to the supermarket. Now I'm spending more, maybe 200 or 150 because prices of goods or prices mm -hmm. of the different products that I'm buying have increased. The second thing is I was recently purchasing a home and the interest rate of the loan that I was getting mm -hmm. is double as if compared to last year. So as of now, the percentage or the, the interest rate was 1.5. Last year, um, uh, home loans were in 0 0.8 or 1.0. Mm -hmm. wow. So it's five, uh, 0 0.5 higher than yep. it was last, last year. What does that mean? That the monthly payment that I'm going to make for that house is it's going to be yeah. higher mm -hmm. yep. than what I was suspecting. So the way that it affected me personally was like grocery shopping and interest rate. The third thing is the interest rate on the credit cards. 
That's before true. when you go and pay something with your credit card and if you um pay it in different installments the percentage rate what or the interest rate was like a 2.5 or 25 percent now is at 35 percent of interest so be careful when using your credit card guys don't divide them into too many payments try to only mm -hmm. pay in one payment so you have mm -hmm. zero interest rate in that purchase so Something else that I wanted to tell you about is that despite that many currencies have devaluated, the Colombian one is the one that has been the most influenced, unfortunately. Uh, according to Andres Giraldo, a professor and director of the Department of Economics at Pontificia Universidad Javeriana, there are some factors that boost this fall. So it's not only that the dollar price is high, it's that the peso is low. And... First and foremost, we have to clear that the dollar price is a situation of demand and supply. Having that clear, let's hear some factors that our partner Juan David is going to tell us about. Sure. So the first one is that the United States is elevating, raising the interest rates, which means that there are fewer dollars, as previously said before, circulating in the world market, which means low supply. However, in the face of a possible recession, um, with, when revenue is not matched to production, investors seek refuge in the dollar, which increases demand, and when there's low supply and high demand, prices go up. In this case, the high price is from the peso. That's so true, Wanda. And also, uh, one of the reasons too, uh, that matters in this situation is the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine that uh, it has caused like an increase on the prices of the goods that are exported to the United States, like gener generation, generation inflation in that country and also in the other countries uh, of Latin America. But something that we cannot let behind is the economic consequences that the pandemic has had. It has affected us in the way that the governments had to actually intervene in the fiscal policies. The fiscal policies are in charge of setting up the prices in the market. So, because of the pandemic, prices are going up. And last but not least, in Colombia's external debt, which is the amount of money that Colombia owes other countries, let me ask you, how much do you think Colombia owes in external debt? Give me a number. This question is for you guys too. How much do you think the external debt that Colombia has is? Take a wild guess. Mm. You go first. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> um, it's a lot of money. Yes, indeed. Um, perhaps more than $10 billion. More than $10 billion, yes. Much more than that. $20 billion. Higher, go Dang. much higher, yes. 70. Seventy million dollars. Seventy, Leo. Well, those numbers are like wild enough, and I don't know, maybe like from thirty to forty billion. Well, let me tell you guys. Sadly and unfortunately, <laughs> our country's external debt exceeds one hundred billion. Bloody hell, that's a lot US of money. U.S. dollars. U.S. dollars. So according, and this is according to uh, Banco de la República, the information taken from March 22nd. So we are into trouble, guys. <laughs> what do it's you think about mess. that, Jennifer? It's a big mess. I don't know how the government is going to do, but also um, like the dollar price is rising due to the direct relation uh, that it has with the petroleum or the oil. And so as the main exporter of petrol, it's Russia is un unable to export. And in, in this case, like price rise and also the dollars go up. What do you think, Juan Fernando? Well, everything that you guys have said is pretty important. Thank you so much for doing that research and sharing that information. And to our listeners, let us know. Did you know all of these facts? Let us know in the comments. And let's take some minutes to read the comments that our audience have made. We have been sending them many questions like what is inflation? Is it better to have a high or low dollar price? What do you think has caused the dollar increase? And how the situation has been affected you? So let's see, what comments do we have to read over here? Let's check, let's check. 
Uh, we have some comments from Carol Michelle Montenegro. She says the family basket has also been affected. Yes, what I was talking about the groceries. Uh, maybe Juan Fernando, can you read Hector's comment yeah. over there? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Hector says it has affected the prices of many items that depend on important parts, such as cars. Two. Some imported raw materials to produce goods are more expensive, so the final product's price is higher. Oh, yes. Yeah, definitely. And if you want to buy a car right now, a brand new car, and you go to a car dealership, guess what? You have to pay for it, order it, and it'll get to you in a year. So, and that's why car prices have been high. It may be Leo, can you read Sergio's comment over there? Sure. Um, dollar price affects in the way that there are a lot of things that we are importing. Yes, definitely. If we are exporting, great, because you're going to get more money for your product. But if you are importing and now you're selling inside the country, that is going to affect the price that you offer the public. But let's keep in mind that we also have an internal problem Pardon, it's worldwide, which is a shortage of containers. Due to COVID, containers were stranded on ports, yep. and now we have shortage, and the money you have to pay in order to export or import is higher due to the shortage on, the, on those um, containers. That is, that is another reason, definitely. And the demand of certain goods during the pandemic, some other things were like stopped in their... Uh, processing or in their in the factories they will stop for meeting the supply or demand of these other products now that we need them again we cannot get them at the same price but to learn more about this topic we interview a professional he is professor isaac quinn major he is a dynamic management career he has a dynamic man management career and he has led academic units in higher education organizations through growth, profitability, and revitalization. What else do we know about Professor Jennifer? He is also an experienced head, uh, credit and investment officer in financial institutions in Colombia and in the United States, too. And he is also an expert in accredited and leasing operations, short and medium term investments, treasury functions, foreign exchange operations, and customer service in financial companies. He also developed key strategies to ensure long term growth in higher education organizations. And he's an expert in management of business administration curricula and a qualified lecturer at both undergraduate and postgraduate levels. So, Juan. Guys, let's watch the interview. Make sure to take some notes because we, at the end of the interview, we're going to be testing you. Hello, guys, and welcome to our interview. My name is Valentina Soto, and today we have the honor of being with Professor Isaac Fuenmayor. Um, Professor Isaac is director of the Business Management Dual Undergraduate Program at Universidad Autónoma de Occidente. Today we are going to talk about inflation and the price of the dollar. Hello, Professor Isaac. Hello, Valentina. Thanks for inviting me. I'm glad to be here. Thank you for accepting the invitation. Okay, we are start with the first question. How is inflation connected to the dollar price? Okay, at a glance, first of all, imported raw materials that become part of final goods make an impact on higher inflation due to the volatility of the exchange rate. Nowadays, uh, the sky-high US dollar everywhere has fostered higher prices on food and other goods. It implies higher inflation in Colombia. As a matter of fact, 10.21% as of July of 2022. However, our central bank uh, made a forecast uh, late last year telling us that the inflation uh, goal for the year 2022 was about 3 to 4%. Hmm. Again, that as of July, we are going on 10.21%. It's a high, high Quite higher. Number. Yeah. What has caused the dollar price increase in Colombia? Two things. First one, the appreciation of the U.S. dollar for the whole world comes from the increase in interest rates by the Federal Reserve Bank, known as the Fed. 
This action causes a shortage on the availability of cash, so all central banks, including ours, rose up interest rate to control inflation by discouraging the use of cash. In theory, it allows to reduce the volatility of prices, but it takes some time to show results. Secondly, there are some other factors such as the price of oil. The higher the dollar, the lower the oil, and so on and so forth because they both move in opposite directions. Why is oil so important in this case? Uh, you say uh, it's an in invest? Inversely. Inversely. They move inversely. Yeah. And what is the relation between oil and the dollar? Um, this is very important. The impact or this impact is already visible on the standard of living. People everywhere has to pay more and more for food and other basic goods and services. By their income, this is key, remains the same. Okay. And the next question is, what actions has the Colombian, Colombian government taken to face this situation? Have they been effective? Good question. We are at the beginning of a new government and a new political model. However, last government uh, talked about reducing some tariffs and some taxes on imported raw materials. Uh, this situation may impact the price of final goods by lowering their price in the market, so the inflation you know, could start to decrease. Okay. Specific actions on the part of the new government are yet to come. On the other hand, the Colombian Central Bank has increased interest rates in the last year to overcome inflation. It has made credit more and more expensive to businesses and families, and at the same time has lower economic growth. Interest rate and economic growth are also variables. And um, what is your prediction for next year? Will inflation and the dollar price continue increasing? Another good question. No prediction. I say it's accurate to either the short or the long term. It all depends on the behavior on uh, macroeconomic variables, some global issues and market trends. It's probable that both inflation and the greenback dollar will remain high for a while. Okay, finally. Uh, how can people benefit from the crisis? We may discuss about uh, either people, for instance, investors in the financial <laughs> sectors or a businessman in the uh, real sector. Financial sectors, financial uh, investors in the financial sectors may benefit from interest uh, rates on the primary markets. Uh, investor for the secondary market cannot say the same because <laughs> yeah. they're going to face losses. Exactly. Now, in the real sectors, uh, many online businesses more flourished. There are also some other key issues to go over. All governments should rethink economic models versus new reality. It deals with favor in science and research to help to develop both social wellness and economic growth. Thanks, Professor Isaac, for sharing with us such a key issues and for your time. It's been a pleasure. Thanks to all of you guys. Thanks. And uh, thanks, Professor, and thanks, guys, for uh, watch, watch us. And um, back to the program with the other guys. Thanks. Well, guys. I think we've done some in our numbers. Let's, let's stop crunching the, sound, the, the numbers. I think we'll have to surprise ourselves with how, how big this topic is. So let's move to our next session, which is the Get It Right. Games, trivia, and a lot of fun. All you gotta do is get it right. Welcome to the, our, new, our session, Get It Right. In this case, we have a quiz of five multiple choice questions. We invite you to tell us in the comments what, do you, what you think about the right answers. So let's start with the Get It Right. Good luck. So, 
Our first question of the Gary Bright is, the price of the dollar is rising due to the direct relationship it has with oil. The above statement is, is that true or false? What do you think? Let's ask Leonardo while we get some answers in the chat. Is the rise of the dollar directly connected with the oil prices? Um, for me, it is a huge no. It can be related to many things, but um, the price won't be affected just by one. So I don't think the oil affects directly the price like right now. Okay. And in the answers, in the comments, we have a Jocelyn saying true, Gerson saying true, Nicholas saying true, Laura and Jamie saying true. The same for Carol and Johan, they all say true. And you guys are absolutely right. The answer is true. Yes, there is a connection between the dollar price and the oil prices or the oil supply and demand. Let's go into question number two, Juan David. Okay, so due to the pandemic, governments had to actively intervene with fiscal policies that today are A. Lowering prices B. Balancing prices C. Driving prices up and D. None of the above Leo Choose one of the three answers. Yeah, can I read like the, the questions? Yes, let's go back to the question and the options Santi so that we can see it on the screen it Says due to the pandemic Gorman has to actively interview with physical police that today are lowering prices, driving up prices, balancing prices, none of the above. For me, it's none of the above. And when we left the pandemic, what we seen is that mm, the governments were printing a lot of money. So I don't see like <laughs> any of the, the um, in those oceans, I don't see like the answer that I'm used to. So I'm selecting none of the above. Okay, that's fine. And over here in the chat, we are waiting, guys, for your answer. So the question again is, due to the pandemic, governments had to actively intervene with fiscal policies that today are lowering prices, balancing prices, driving prices up. And the answer is C, driving prices up. I mean, governments are trying to intervene. That is not helping, as you can see. But definitely, they're trying to make some changes on the policies to try to balance prices worldwide in each of the countries. Let's go into question number three. The question is, Colombia's external debt exceeds $100 million. The above statement, is it true or is it false? You remember, guys, we were guessing? Yeah. So we can definitely say that this is true. 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 We have so much debt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking about this the other day, and I said I worried about me maybe owing, thing, uh, owing money in my credit cards and things like that. And I compare my debt to the external debt. <laughs> <laughs> Why would like, you do that? And I say, I have nothing to uh, worry about. <laughs> like an ant. Mm -mm. Exactly. Nothing. Let's go with question number four, Juanfer. Okay. On July 12th, one dollar was equal to one euro. What was the equivalent in the Colombia pesos? A. 4,000 Colombia pesos. B. 4,600 Colombia pesos. C. 3,950 3, Colombian pesos. And D. Uh, 2,400 Colombian pesos. I but, wish you were 2,500. Yeah, I wish too. I remember when the dollar back in the day was 1,000 pesos. $1, 1,000. Mm -hmm. That was 2,000. And then it went up to 2,000, and we still thought it was high. It was high, yeah. Well, no. If we could go back in time, like back to the future, buy some dollars 10 years ago, <laughs> keep them and sell them today. Maybe 20 years. Exactly. 
You'll be making some good money. So the answer is 4,000, 4,600, 3,950, or 2,400. Which one is it? And 3,000, 3,900. 350, yep. you guys? Um, 4,600. Option B. Yeah. Option B is almost the same as the euro. 4,600. And the last question of today, Jennifer, is... Yeah, so we have... Uh, which one is the main exporter of the petrol? We have A, Spain, B, Taiwan, then we'll have Portugal, and then Russia. What do you think about this answer? Well, remember that during the program we said that there was a country in war with another country. So that was affecting the petrol's price. Which one is it? I'm not sure about it, but I think that is, and that one is Russia, and that's the reason why they are attempt like to fight, and due to um, true Ukraine, and there goes like like the pipelines that goes and that connects the the hero song to their supply with the the petrol. Exactly, you're absolutely right, guys. So Russia is the right answer. Guys, we are finished for today. We want to give a special thanks to Leonardo Segura for joining us today. Thank you for having me here. It was a pretty cool experience. So if people want your, maybe your um, recommendations or your advice regarding cryptocurrency, regarding finance, how can they contact you? Um, well, through my Instagram or they can message me through like my email, my, my college email. And my Instagram is like s dot guerrero and three underlines. That's s the tag. dot guerrero three underlines. Yep. Got it. So find him on Instagram for more information regarding cryptocurrency and finance advice. We also want to give a special thanks to Professor Isa Quinn Major for accepting our invitation for the interview and for our team leader Valentina Soto who helped so much to make this program possible you guys it was a pleasure presenting next to you nice to meet you all and welcome to our team say bye everybody bye 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 see you in our next program remember to follow us on instagram and facebook as well as speaks english we speak english do you bye bye bye, bye. Welcome to Wow Speaks English, a radio program made by students for the world.